So, we all know that the Fantastic Four movie reboot attempt was bad. Maybe not all of you saw it, apparently most of you didn't see it, but we all know that it's bad, whether you've seen it or you haven't. I have now finally taken the plunge to see just how bad it was, and to see if there was any silver linings, to see what mistakes there would be made. I didn't go in there thinking, maybe it will be good. I knew it wasn't going to be, but I was like, it was a learning experience. Why was it bad? The reasons the film was bad is a, a many-fold answer, but it's not a 9 out of a 100. It wasn't that terrible. You're kind of just really disappointed in the film as a whole. It's not wholesale bad, but it's just mediocrely just disappointing in what it could have been because it's Marvel's first family. It's Fantastic Four. Regardless of what comic book films that you like or don't like, this film could have been good because it's the Fantastic Four. So where did this film start becoming bad? Well, the first bad sign was that A, the movie was being made, and you would have to remind yourself that, damn it, Fox still has the rights to Fantastic Four. They'd had two terrible tries beforehand, so there's really no reason to have any faith in a third try. They have had some success in two, maybe three of the X-Men movies, but outside of that, a pretty terrible track record as a whole. And then you take a look at the other two Fantastic Four films that you made, and they're like, yeah, that's they shouldn't have done that at all. And the second warning sign was when they hired director Josh Trank. Everyone loved him because of Chronicle. Personally, I didn't care for Chronicle at all. I thought it was a bad film. And outside of that, he really didn't have anything on his resume. But people saw that tiny little hit cult classic of Chronicle, and they were like, yeah, Fantastic Four, we're awesome. Let's have him do a Star Wars movie too. But thankfully, that's not happening either. So it starts from the studio head. They're the one that makes all the bad decisions. They hired a bad director. They got a bad script. They hired some good actors, but they completely squandered it with a bad script and a terrible, tyrannical director who was very, very cold to all of them, would keep reclused to himself on the set, almost got in a fight with Miles Teller, who he fought to be Mr. Fantastic in the first place against the studio's wishes, and then he fought against Kate Mara being in the film, which was the studio's wishes, so he was immediately cold and really, really sour towards her. And overall, the more and more that we hear, it was just a volatile set, and Josh Trank is just is hopefully this torpedoed his career because frankly the guy kind of deserves it. But that's not to put all of the blame on Josh Trank. It, the studio made a lot of decisions that torpedoed the movie before it even got off the ground. Trank said he had four action pieces for four major action scenes approved and then the day before shooting they took all of those action scenes away from him. And that definitely shows in the final product where Guess what? There's no action scenes until the last five minutes. The pacing of the film is really bad. You can see where they might have made changes because they are trying to cut corners in every which way, including the reshoots where they had to give Kate Mara a really crappy wig where, the, I don't know, they saved 50 bucks and where they could have gotten a good one instead. So in case you haven't seen the film, here's the plot in a very, very unambiguous nutshell. So Reed wants to create a teleporter because he's a scientist. He creates a teleporter and then Dr. Baxter sees that, oh man, you can bring something back. We've never been able to bring something back before. Here, why don't you come work with us? Hey Victor, remember that thing that you were trying to work on? Well, now we might be able to get it work. Come back and work with me and my daughter and my son who got in a drag racing accident and to get his car back and making him work for me. So they're all working on to make the teleporter, and then they make the teleporter, and then they send a chimpanzee, and he comes alive. So they're like, sweet, awesome. But then the higher-ups are like, all right, now it's time to get NASA to actually get some humans across the plane. And then they're all like, oh man, we deserve all the credits and all the glory and stuff, so we're going to do it without their permission. So then Reed and Ben and Victor and Johnny all go to this other dimension, and then they get there, and they plant an American flag, and then an earthquake happens, and then Victor falls off a cliff into this pile of green energy, and then they all try to escape. Uh, Sue is able to get them back by overriding some things on Earth, and then they teleport back, energy hits Sue, and of course they were surrounded in energy, Ben gets hit by rocks, and then fast forward to when they wake up in Area 57, whatever that's supposed to be, 
and they all have these uh, very specific Fantastic Four-like powers. Reed wakes up all stretchied out, he's able to retract himself, and then escapes the facility. Fast forward one year later, which I think might have been a rewrite, and we have Ben Grimm going on all these covert missions, killing a bunch of people, so that the government can help him get back to the way he was if he does these favors for them. Johnny is next in line to start doing some missions for them when Sue finds Reed, who's trying to figure out a way to help his friend Ben all by his own by staying off the grid. But she finds him, Ben captures him, brings him back to get the teleporter to work that the government wants so they can create more super-powered soldiers because the government's always bad. So then he gets the teleporter to work, they send in some astronauts or whatever, and they find Victor there, they bring Victor back because they think, oh man, he's alive, let's bring him back, this is awesome, he's alive. So then Victor weighs up, kills everyone with his mind, wants to go back to his world and destroy Earth at the same time. All the Fantastic Four get sucked into this black hole, uh, they fight him and stop him. And that's it. That's that's the end of the movie. That's 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 the entire story. I didn't really skip over anything at all. It's an hour and 40 minutes, and there's very, very little character development. Um, it wasn't a terrible movie until like the last 20 minutes where they're like, oh shoot, uh, guys, uh, we're, uh, uh, the movie's, and it's done. And it's done. It's done. They just, they really, really did not want this movie to be good. So basically Fox just didn't want this movie to succeed. They just wanted to make it so they can keep the rights. That's, that's why they made the first one and the second one is why they made X-Men Origins Wolverine. Um, not complete ash can movies, cause, because they did get released on like the very, very first Fantastic Four movie, which many of you have seen pictures of from long time ago that was never planned to come out. It was just so they can keep the rights. This was in that same vein, but they actually released it and thought, ah, people won't know the difference or even care because they don't re learn from their mistakes in the last two Fantastic Four films. And guess what? People grew wise to it. They saw the terrible reviews and the terrible job that Josh Trank did and the terrible decisions that the studio made, and nobody saw it, and that's a good thing. The movie in itself wasn't terrible. You're like, you kind of want it to be worse than it actually is just for the raison d'etre of, you know, having something to make fun of, like the, the two previous ones that were like super campy and super cheesy. The CG wasn't terrible. Ben looked better than he did in his Michael Chiklis version. Johnny looked kind of weird, but doable. And, you know, Sue was Sue and Reed was the weirdest looking one because, I mean, come on, it's a stretchy human body that's kind of hard to not make super duper fake looking. But don't think that this is, ah, this just goes to show you can't make a good Fantastic Four movie. You can! The stories are there! Just pick one! You had a young Fantastic Four, you could have done it, but you didn't want to because you wanted to cut corners, you didn't want to hire a new director, you just wanted to make a movie so you could keep the rights and try to freaking steal money from people. But guess what? It didn't work, and you're paying the price for it, like a nine-figure price. And that's a shame, because the Fantastic Four is awesome, but the silver lining is that Fox, they aren't going to be making another Fantastic Four movie. Um, they had the sequel lined up for 2017, and that's not happening anymore. The rumor is that they're going to uh, fast-track a Deadpool sequel in that place, so there would be a Deadpool movie next year and the year after that instead of a second Fantastic Four movie, which I know no one thinks is ever going to happen again anymore, at least from Fox. So I think we can all assume safely that the rights will be going back to Marvel. Fox is going to try to sell it to them at a premium price. Who knows what Marvel is willing to pay on, or if they want to do a Fantastic Four movie after three terrible tries. But if there's one studio that we know that can do it right, it's Marvel, because they haven't made a mistake since they started their MCU with Iron Man. The other silver lining is they didn't ruin an already good storyline. They made their own dumb storyline that had a tiny bit of buildup with no conflict, and they're like, Oh, here's the bad guy, and it's gone. The time between the crew finding Victor and then the end of the movie is like 20 minutes. So you have 20 minutes to establish a threat and then neutralize it to make it feel like there was never really a problem at all. They also had some really cliche nonsense like Victor loved Sue. You had the, the teacher not believing in the smart kid because he's too smart. You have the government as the bad guy trying to do everything to make better weapons so that America can rule the world because we're all evil. 
cliched government tropes that we've seen in way too many movies and even too many comic book movies as well. But the cast wasn't terrible and the movie wasn't like the worst thing you've ever seen, although the ending was just garbage. When both Ghost Rider movies have better endings than your movie, you don't have a good movie on your hands. Heck, Punisher Warzone had a better ending and I've never even seen that movie. It felt like it was an okay movie that had kinda bad parts, kinda okay parts, and kinda good parts, but then they chopped out the kinda good parts and added in just bad parts to just have it be okay at some points at best. It's not a really a movie you can laugh at because of how stupid it is or the dumb decisions that they make until really the end. They don't even do Doctor Doom right. The redesign, whatever, he doesn't look threatening is, is the main problem I have with it. But they also just changed him completely. The only thing he does is kill people with his mind. He doesn't shoot lightning or energy or anything. He just walks around and people die around him. Like, what kind of villain is that? And then when he teleports them to the alternate universe of whatever it is, Planet Zero, um, he just, like, throws rocks all over the place, and also, he f when he fights the Fantastic Four, he fights them as if he already knows what their powers are, but he would have no way of knowing that, because he was trapped in Planet Zero while they were on Earth doing their thing. He, he disables Reed's suit like he knows that will make him go all spaghetti until Reed realizes, you know, he doesn't need that suit to not become spaghetti. And then he throws rocks in the air, it's like, where are you, Sue? It's like, you don't know that she's invisible, how do you know that? So overall, it was just a rushed crap job that they couldn't ash can and they couldn't throw enough money at to make it correctly because they just wanted it made. They didn't care how good it was made. They didn't care about the script. They didn't care that the director was a tyrannical jackass. They just, this, the studio didn't care. So the silver lining is Fox ain't making another Fantastic Four movie because they're the reason that it was bad. They made all the wrong decisions. The things that could have been good about the movie were just completely tarnished because of all the things that were just so mediocre and bland and boring in that rushed five minute ending. So yeah, it was a bad film, but uh, Marvel, now's your chance. Show everyone the truth that a good Fantastic Four movie can be made because no one thought a lot of movies that you made could have been good, but you proved them all wrong. So let's do Marvel's first family justice and make a good movie.